This is the first of the Voltage Lab 2 walkthroughs, and in this video, we're looking at Laboratory Oscillator 1. This is the wave folding oscillator, and this has got center clipping, which effectively splits the wave shapes into the positive and the negative portions, and we can modulate those using these two knobs here. That's the positive, and that's the negative. But let's take a look at the wave shaping first. We've got four different main wave shapes. I'll just turn this up. I'm going straight, direct from the out into the out, so the out of the oscillator into the out here. So we're getting a nice clean signal. We've got a sine, we've got a triangle, sawtooth, pulsed. And then we've got a random mode here and that's using this clock here. So if we speed that clock up, let's put it back onto the sine for now. Listen to the wave folding. And you'll notice wave folding of the sawtooth doesn't sound great, and neither does wave folding of a square. And that's why we've got this warp mode here. So if we go to the warp mode, what this does, it creates the same harmonics as the square, but in a different wave shape that's foldable. So it still sounds like a square, a little bit of a buzzier square perhaps, but... we get all that beautiful wave folding. Same with the sawtooth, so without. Oops, missed it. You've got to cycle through with the button. I'm with. But this still works on the sign and the triangle as well, so. So you do get different tones from it from all of the oscillator shapes. So let's go back to those center clipping circuits now. Let's go back to the sign. It's easier to show on that, I think. Turn it up. So with this one, we're just in the positive portion. You can see it's doing something strange there. And the negative. But obviously, as we do this, we're reducing the magnitude of those waves. So taking it down to, to zero there. And this is what this AGC circuit does. It tries to interpolate um, what should be there. So keep the same shape, but increase the magnitude. So increase the volume of it or the gain. And that's what we're getting here. So if we take that off, bring it in, we're still getting that wave shape, but it's louder. But it doesn't do it perfectly, so you get different tones from it. Let's go to that, for example. Bit buzzier. And then we've got the focus button. And if you can imagine all this wave shaping and wave folding and the manipulation has resulted in a bit of a DC offset, I think the oscilloscope I use may adjust for it automatically because I can't see it. But if you switch in the focus, let's just bring something in. You get a different tone again, and that's because it's shifting the whole thing up, and up or down. Well, that's the theory anyway. So there's the AGC. And if it shifts it for the DC offset, it's a similar shape, but it gives again, gives a slightly different tone. And it depends on which wave shape you're using. It's not always more like that's That's a bit buzzy. It's got a few more harmonics in it, but on different wave shapes and in different positions of the wave folder, you get different types of changes. It might not necessarily be more harmonic. It might be less harmonic. Here on the triangle, for example, AGC and bringing the focus. It sounds like it's less buzzy, less harmonic, doesn't it? So it's a little bit unpredictable what you're going to get.
we've got an offset for that. So let's go back to the sign. It makes it easier to see. Take the AGC off for now. We go to the offset. So between those parameters, there's loads of ways of manipulating these wave shapes and those harmonics. Uh, and obviously you can do that with the CV inputs down here. We've got a CV input for the offset, for the positive or negative, and for the timbre. So for the yellow knobs, we've actually got CV inputs. For the positive or negative, we've got this controller here, but we control either the positive or the negative. So um, let's bring that in, that's positive. So we're modulating the positive with this CV controller here. Let's bring in just a standard five volt input from the attenuator. So this input controls the positive unless we press edit and negative CV and now it's controlling the negative. We've also got an FM in and a timbre in, and the timbre in means we can bring any signal from anywhere and put it through the wave folder. So we could bring something in from um, oscillator two and play it through the wave folder. And I've not mentioned yet these little outputs I've got here. That's what these brightly colored cables are doing. We've got sine, we've got seed, and we've got the AGC out. So the sine is always a sine, no matter what we're using. The seed is the seed waveform. So it's changing from a side to a triangle, to a sawtooth, to a square. But it's not affected by this. So if we turn the output up, the seed, so that one on the top right, isn't affected. And then we've got the AGC out. And the AGC out is what's coming out of the AGC circuit which is everything that's going through the positive and the negative manipulation, plus the AGC. And the focus. So this is changing. So number three here, the green one, the AGC, is changing. That's the one on the bottom left. As I play with all this stuff over here. But not when I use the wave folding. And this means we've got a signal now for each stage of what's happening with this oscillator. We've got one for the sine, one for the seed, and one for manipulating it in every way except for the wave folding. So you can bring another signal in, wave fold that, and we've still got access to laboratory oscillator one. But it just means that we've got lots more that we can do with that. It's not just a single oscillator, a single output. There's so many different things we can do with that once we start playing with it and the rest of the system. Perhaps let's use pulse width modulation on oscillator two, because oscillator one doesn't have pulse width modulation. So we'll take the output of two, we'll put it into the timbre of one, we'll modulate, and we'll modulate the uh, pulse width. Where are we there? Pulse width with this LFO. Turn it on. So that's PWM. Being wave folded. And yet we've still got access. Oops. <laughs> we've still got access to the AGC. So the AGC you can see there on the output is completely unaffected by what we're doing with the PWM on this. Let's put this onto a... So we've got a sign being manipulated with the wave folder, plus we've got the AGC and the positive and negative and the, the center clipping. 
also toggle MIDI on and off here. So this will determine if it's listening to MIDI notes or not. So you can have it as a drone. And one thing I've not shown on this actually is the range of frequencies you get from it, which is why you might want it as a drone, because it really goes into into LFO modes. So considering all the different shapes you've got there, you've got an awful lot of mad LFO shapes you can use. And then we go into bat vexing territory. Plus or minus seven semitones on the fine as well. Or thereabouts. So I hope that gives you a good idea of what we can do with Laboratory Oscillator 1.